Rational Choice Theory by Elizabeth Clayton. The purpose of this presentation is to overall evaluate the rational choice theory and ask questions such as does it apply to many cases or is it general or is it too specific and even if it is at all falsifiable. Um, today I'm going to conclude that with these questions that the theory itself is not very useful or a good theory. Beccaria and Bentham were the originators of classical theories such as rational choice theory. Their focus was mainly on individuals' personal choice, which was often said to be based on rationality or a rational choice. There were cent eight central points to this theory that had been pointed out early on by its originators. These eight, all eight of these central points are so highly re relevant to the understanding of the theory today and several of which I will be discussing. Cornish and Clark are people who influenced rational choice theory and its modern interpretation that we use today. They were two men who wanted to actually explore the mind of a burglar and what he might ask himself before stealing from someone else's house. They determined that they would ask themselves questions such as which house would have most valuables inside of it, are the neighbors going to be house sitting or watching over the house or how difficult it might be for them to actually gain access to the house in general. And these questions better help them to grasp the thinking and consideration processes that um, criminals actually go through before committing crimes. Rational choice theory, also referred to as choice theory, is the notion that an individual weighs the costs and benefits before deciding to commit a crime or not. It allows us to further infer that the theory also establishes that pretty much all crime is premeditated. Nothing is last minute. It's all thought out. This theory provides a macro perspective on why individual criminals decide to commit specific crimes. Because people usually engage in crime because it is rewarding, easy, satisfying, or even fun in some way for them. While this theory does have the underlying belief that all crime is premeditated, there are contributing factors that can lead a person towards committing the crime or choosing to not commit the crime. Such factors include background factors like psychological, social, or demographic aspects or characteristics that they might have, or situational factors, for example, like things that are going on in their life, peer pressure from their friends, conflicts with a significant other, or the consumption of alcohol or drugs at the time the crime com was committed. While considering to commit the crime or not, as I previously stated, the individual will weigh the cost and benefits of committing and not committing the crime. This process is usually done in a quick fashion, but when undergoing consideration, the individual will consider things such as chances of getting caught, severity of the expected punishment, value gain from committing the crime, and the immediate need for the value that they will gain. If a person views the likelihood of them getting caught being low, or that the punishment wouldn't be that bad or severe, that they wouldn't gain much from committing the crime, or that they don't have an immediate need because it can wait or it's not as important, then they, according to this theory, are likely to not commit the crime. But if the case was the opposite for each of those factors and the person, according to this theory again, is rationally likely to commit the crime in general. The criminal uses their past experiences as well as weighing the costs and benefits to determine what they're going to do. However, research has also shown that the criminal's needs also play a role into their decision. Choice theory also relies on the assumption that um, criminals have different levels of needs just like anyone else, which can be explained by Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and that outlines the basic that the basic needs come before other needs, such as shelter before things like relationships. For example, a criminal may rationally consider stealing food from a convenience store because he's hungry before considering stealing someone else's iPhone because he just wants a new cell phone. The contributing factors, the criminal's past experiences, consideration of costs and benefits, and the individual's individual criminals needs are what this theory establishes is the thinking is going into the thinking processes of a criminal before committing a crime. 
This theory is highly based on the assumption that a criminal is being rational or even rationally thinking or thinking at all before committing a crime. However, the theory highlights that the choice only has to be rational to the individual considering the crime, but not to anyone else. For example, it might be rational for a criminal again to steal food because he's hungry, but to someone else that may be and probably is irrational because he could simply buy food or go home and find something to eat out of their kitchen. Society can attempt to defer criminals from deciding to commit these crimes by implementing certain precautions. Methods such as target hardening make it more difficult for the offender to get an item, person, or place that they are attempting to obtain or get to. An example of target hardening would be bank vaults. Banks place vaults and various other kinds of safes into their establishments to deter criminals from choosing to attempt to rob them because the difficulty of robbing them increases severely with the presence alone of these vaults and safes. Overall, though, rational choice theory has many factors and aspects to consider when looking into the mind of an individual criminal, but it can apply to and so-called explain any case it's presented with. It's not specific, really, or at all. It's really too general. It's unfalsifiable, and it doesn't really tell you or explain what is even needed to show or falsify the theory. Rational choice theory mainly describes, it doesn't really explain why a b criminal's brain process information in that way or why we even believe that choice is even rational.